Hello everybody, I hope that the start of the semester is going out well for everybody, that you're adjusting to classes, whether they be on campus or remote, okay, and that things are going pretty good. And again, just as a reminder, if there's ever a question that you have about this class, um, feel free to email me. Um, students have emailed me already um, about various things and I'm always happy to get an email and I try to respond as soon as I get them. Usually I'll definitely get them within a day or so. So yeah, if you have a question about anything, don't hesitate to email me. So uh, last week I mentioned critical reading as being an exercise and therefore something that you should practice like any sort of exercise. No skill is achieved without practice, but there also has to be something to practice on, right? Uh, that might seem like it goes without saying, but it is worth thinking about. A person can learn all there is to know about playing the guitar, for example, through tutorials and books. You can look at all the YouTube videos about learning how to play a guitar. You can even watch a friend who knows how playing the guitar, playing the guitar. but no one can really call themselves an expert guitarist in, if they don't have an instrument, if they don't pick up the thing and practice it for themselves. Another example might be that if you want to know a foreign language, you have to spend time conversing with people fluent in, in that language, right? Uh, you can learn how to read the language. You can listen to people online talking in that language, but you also need to do it for yourself to be able to feel that you really have a grasp on it or that you're really uh, proficient in it. So when we talk about the skill of critical reading, we've got to remember that it's all just a bunch of talk without any material to practice that skill on. And that's why it's important to read as much as you can and as often as you can. Uh, look at the readings for today. Uh, you can't tear Malcolm X or Stephen King away from books. It becomes pretty evident when you get into reading those essay. Uh, they're all about reading. They read every spare minute they can get. Uh, you're all lucky in this regard because you're at a university and part of what's expected of you here is that you spend a lot of time studying. People in other walks of life uh, have to work a lot harder if they want to carve out a chunk of time in their day to read because their jobs or their family issues or whatever it is gets in the way of serious study. But here, serious study is, in a sense, your job. You have more time than you might have at other points in your life to actually sit down and become absorbed in some sort of meaningful study and to apply critical reading skills. Not to say that you all don't have a thousand other responsibilities at the same time. I'm sure you do. I. I did as well um, when I was going through school. I felt like I was trying to balance studying and working in a job. But it does help that your school life is structured so that there is time given to you in the syllabus for assignments to sit down and read and take time reading. Not only that, but you have plenty of material to practice on, uh, to practice your critical reading skills on. And it's why I assigned an anthology of 50 different essays so that you'd have a lot to work with and a lot of different essays that might appeal to different people. But throughout the semester, I'd also like for you to apply what you're learning in this class to readings from your other classes as well. Now, some of the stuff that we talk about will apply to your specific books in other classes and some won't. But I do just want you to keep in mind that, you, what, that what you're learning in here doesn't apply just to this class, but really to all of them. Uh, but what happens afterwards? The immediate benefit of critical reading may be to help you in your classes, sure. But is there a profit in it outside of academic education? Uh, can critical reading really get you anywhere outside of the university setting or outside of any school setting? Well, my answer, of course, is yes. And that's the sort of answer we get from the essay by Malcolm X as well. Near the end of the essay, yeah, here it is. Near the end of the essay, he's talking about what reading has done for him in his life. And I want to read a passage on page 248, if you're reading it from the 50 Essays Anthology where he says, I have often reflected upon the new vistas that reading opened to me. 
I knew right there in prison that reading had changed forever the course of my life. As I see it today, the ability to read awoke inside me some long dormant craving to be mentally alive. I certainly wasn't seeking any degree, the way that a college confers a status symbol upon its students. My homemade education gave me, with every additional book that I read, a little bit more sensitivity to the deafness, dumbness, and blindness that was afflicting the black race in America. Not long ago, an English writer telephoned me from London asking questions. One was, what's your alma mater? I told him, books. So he says that his alma mater, or the place where he graduated from, wasn't a university or a college, it was the books themselves. And that he studies far more intensely now than he would have done if he had gone to college. And I think a lot of people view reading as something that they have to do for school. But like with Stephen King in his essay, uh, in the example that he gives of his son playing the saxophone, if there's no joy in the activity or if there's no fun in the exercise, if it's not something that you want to do for yourself, it's no good. In his essay, Reading to Write, he talks about his son wanting to learn how to play the saxophone. And so he describes how he and his wife bought his son a saxophone to play and... He plays it for a little while, but then Stephen King realizes that his son's not very interested in it, and he asks him if he wants to quit, and he says yes. And he says, um, I knew that he wasn't interested in it, not because Owen stopped practicing, but because he was practicing only during the periods Mr. Bowie had set for him. Half an hour after school, four days a week, plus an hour on the weekends. Owen mastered the scales and the notes, Nothing wrong with his memory, his lungs, or his hand-eye coordination. But we never heard him taking off, surprising himself with something new, blissing himself out. And as soon as his practice time was over, it was back into the case with the horn, and there it stayed until the next lesson or practice time. What this suggested to me was that when it came to the sax and my son, there was never going to be any real playtime. It was all going to be rehearsal. And that's no good. If there's no joy in it, it's just no good. It's best to go on to some other area where the deposits of talent may be richer and the fun quotient higher. And he makes that comparison there between learning how to play an instrument and reading that I kind of made earlier. And saying that if you're just doing it to achieve some sort of short-term benefit, such as getting a good grade or passing a class, you can do it, but you're not going to get the most out of it. Um, You can... Uh, sort of learn the notes or learn the steps and be walking through the motions and maybe pass that class, but there's a part of it that you missed out on if you weren't doing it, I guess you could say sort of with your heart and soul, if there wasn't any joy or fun in it. Uh, But the more that you engage in critical reading, uh, the more you'll come to view it as a pleasure that you can keep coming back to your whole life. If you're someone who's naturally curious, you'll want to know uh, in general. You'll want to know all things. Uh, You'll enjoy learning new things. And that's what uh, reading provides for you. Um, I've included a link uh, below this video to another YouTube video that's a good example of this sort of person that comes back for the joy of learning things. So be sure to check out that video after you finished watching this one. And it's a short it's a short tour of Bruce Lee's personal library. Let me make sure the link's still working. Yeah, it's there. Okay. If you don't know, uh, Bruce Lee was a famous martial artist and an actor. Uh, one thing that I want you to notice when you watch this video, it's not very long, it's only about four minutes or so, is how he reads his books. You'll see that he writes his own outline in the back of the book on the blank pages so he can sort of get a sense of what the whole book was about at a glance. It's a pre-reading technique that we'll talk about in more detail next time. He also does his own commentary by annotating, by making notes in the margins, which we talked about last week. Um, Another thing that I'll point out about this video, though, is that when we think of Bruce Lee, we don't really think of an academic sort of personality, right? He was a talented man who succeeded in a lot of different fields, 
but none of those fields we would think of as requiring extensive critical reading. Uh, martial arts is a, a physical activity. Acting uh, requires being present bodily, physical activities. Uh, the, sa the same goes for Malcolm X and to an extent Stephen King. They weren't really reading because it was something that was necessarily in their field of interest or in their career. Uh, they weren't reading because there was a grade on the line or to get a degree. They were reading because they couldn't think of a more worthwhile use of their time. One of the reasons that we kicked off the semester the way that we did, uh, with the specific readings that we did this week's and last week's, was because all of these writers are relatively well-known in their own fields. Uh, Bruce Lee as well is well-known in his career. And when an important historical figure or a celebrity tells us something, we tend to listen more to them than we would to someone else for better or for worse. And that can be abused, obviously. There's all sorts of stories about people buying into silly ideas or buying bad products because a celebrity got onto a commercial and told them to do so. But there is something about um, the human brain, I guess, that respects role models, that respects authorities in different fields and is more willing to listen to their advice on things. And the advice that Bruce Lee would give or Malcolm X, Stephen King, Frederick Douglass are all giving is that reading is a worthwhile use of your time and you can take something away with it regardless of what career or field or discipline you're going into. So there's that. And these first few readings are also going into detail about how these figures approached reading. And that's good for us to know too, because if we like their approach, we can imitate them. Imitation is a great learning tool. In his essay, Stephen King talks about this too, right? He mentions that how he gravitates to the style, the writing style of certain science fiction writers that he liked, and how he learned to avoid the styles of those that he didn't like in his own writing. There was a word specifically that he brings up. I can't remember what he said. Oh yeah, he talks about this one writer who used the word zestful too much. He abused the use of the word zestful. So everything was zestful. Zestful smiles, zestful anticipation. And he says that after reading that, he has never used that word in his own writing because it annoyed him so much he just sort of learned not to do it. And so that's an example of how you can have sort of a positive role model and a negative role model too. Not just in critical reading, but in life. There's somebody that you look up to and there's aspects or elements that you take of what they do and you apply it to your own life. Uh, this is kind of tying back again to what I talked about last week too, with me taking Benjamin Franklin's autobiography and sort of commandeering his morning schedule to see if it would work for me, his morning routine. But there's also the people that um, you learn from a negative example. If you read an author that you really don't like how they're saying things, you learn not to do that in your own writing. And so the takeaway for this week should be really two things. One, uh, find someone to admire or emulate, or maybe there already is somebody that you admire or that you try to when I say emulate or imitate, it doesn't really mean you want to be a carbon copy of that person, right? You don't want to, you want to be yourself all the time, but you do want to kind of learn from others and take the best parts of them for your own instance for yourself. So find someone who you already do admire or emulate or find someone new who you admire or emulate who inspires you to be a critical reader who inspires you to want to pick up a book for the pleasure of picking up a book and reading on your own or for your, for your own. And two, also spend time reading things that you're passionate about. And it's kind of the same concept, but, but again, it's going back to what Stephen King was talking about with his son playing the saxophone. Nobody is really ever giving their best effort for, into something if it's not something that they don't really care about. And there are books, and maybe not even books, right? Articles, any sort of text 
there are texts on just about any subject you can imagine. So it shouldn't be too terribly difficult to stumble across reading something that at least interests you. I mean, even if you want to think not just about published works, but text messages that you get from friends or social media posts, the ones that are really interesting, the ones that jump out to you, you spend more time reading and, well, actually, I would say you kind of read it faster at first because you're totally sucked into it. You're absorbing it. But then you kind of pause and go back and go through it bit by bit to break down the elements of that post or that text just so you can know that you really understood it. Whereas if it's a post that maybe you're not that interested in, maybe you follow some sort of distant relative on Facebook and they post stuff every once in a while and you just scroll through it, you don't look at it, that you're not likely to get much from their posts that way. But when it interests you, you do a better job at reading it. And that doesn't really change. That always stays the same. Okay, so that's the lecture for this week. Don't forget to check out the link to the Bruce Lee video and see the tour that I think it's his daughter is giving of his library and also to respond to the lecture questions. Uh, let me know if you guys have questions on anything. Again, I hope it's all going well and have a good day.